Well, once again, your old pal Jake is the cat that caught the canary. Just pleased, uh, pleased as punch. Uh, now that, you know, the the folks who have things like uh, uh, garages where they actually uh, can keep their cars or, or uh, have to really decide, will I fly first class on my vacation to France or should I watch the bank account and only f- uh, fly business class? Those sorts of folks, and the media they watch, uh, finally starting to wise up to the idea that maybe, just maybe, it would be possible, it would have been possible, to sort of get this investigation into the uh, coup d'etat that Trump uh, tried to pull, uh, going a little sooner than they did. And... Uh, To that end, I give you the Washington Post, an article by Carol Lenig. Oh yes, let's uh, let's let's have a quick gander here. FBI resisted opening probe into there we go into uh, Trump's role in January six for more than a year. Let me let me just say that one more time for the kids in back. You remember you remember how we were saying that most likely not based on special information that we had here at Wicked, just based on knowing the standard American corruption that the way they would try to cover this up would be the way they try to cover up uh, cover up all crimes by presidents. This includes George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush. Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon delay as long as they can properly investigating it. And with Nixon, I'm not even talking about Watergate. Delay the investigation as long as they can. Uh, In other words, don't mention it and let the American public assume everybody's doing their job. Let them get told that everything will be fine. And then, once... Once we lose interest, once the next shiny object uh, seems to have our attention, do a quick press conference saying, no charges, time to heal, etc., etc., etc. And it was really, it was really only the fact that the January 6th committee did the good work that they did uh, that, that made it too embarrassing not to uh, investigate the actual cause of this. By the way, it's also the investigations by state attorney generals. When, When state AGs okayed investigations into Trump for election interference, it put Merrick Garland... In, the, uh, in a rather embarrassing position, because what would have happened then? Well, pretty obvious what did happen. The January 6th committee did a pretty great job of laying out the whole scheme. When we find out new things uh, in, in the trials about this, it's only going to be deeper levels of the same thing. But this was a coordinated effort. This was an attempted coup. This was not... This was not just a speech gone awry that Trump didn't do, uh, didn't then act properly around. This was an attempt to overthrow the government. Working with Oath Keepers, working with uh, Proud Boys, working with Mark Meadows, Giuliani, and working with state Republican parties. In other words... How this whole time I've been saying the Republican Party is a criminal organization. This is what I'm talking about. Well, somebody decided we, we, I guess, geez, I guess, we better ask a question or two. And this is what they came up with. Hours after he was sworn in as Attorney General, Merrick Garland and his deputies gathered in a wood-paneled conference room in the Justice Department for a private briefing on the investigation he had promised to make his highest priority. Oh, I'm going to get after it, he said. Bringing to justice 
those responsible for the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. I want you to know I have not read this article. I've only heard about this article. I want to read it with you because I want to be able to make some predictions here and make sure uh, that those predictions are genuine. Maybe I'll get them wrong, but I'm going to, without looking at that second paragraph, I'm going to assume that the thing Merrick Garland said was, we're going to get, a, we're going to go after the poorest people we can in that crowd. I know it's a lot of small business owners, uh, but we're going to go after the poorest folks that we can, and we're not going to go after um, th- their betters. In the two months since the siege, federal agents had conducted 709, uh, yeah, 709 searches, charged 278 rioters, and identified 885 likely suspects, said Michael R. Sherwin, the then-acting U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, ticking through a slide presentation. Garland and some of his deputies nodded approvingly of the stats, and the new Attorney General... Ripes. And, then, uh, and the new attorney general called the progress remarkable, according to people in the room. And I got to highlight it to see it uh, on my screen. Apologies. Uh, Sherwin's office, with the help of the FBI, was responsible for prosecuting all crimes stemming from the January 6th attack. He had made headlines the day after by refusing to rule out the possibility that President, now thank Christ, former President, Donald Trump himself could be culpable. We are looking at all actors, not only the people who went into the building. Sherwin said in response to a reporter's question about Trump, if the evidence fits the element of a cri- the elements of a crime, they're going to be charged. But according to a year we go, but according to a copy of the briefing document absent from Sherwin's 11-page presentation to Garland on March 11th, 2021, was any reference to Trump or his advisors, those who did not go into the Capitol riot but orchestrated events that led to it. A Washington Post investigation found that more than a year would pass before prosecutors and FBI agents jointly embarked on a formal probe of actions uh, directed... Neat. Thank you. Uh, uh, Actions uh, directed from the White House to try to steal the election... Even then, the FBI stopped short of identifying the former president as a focus of that investigation. Jesus Christ. They are trying. And bear in mind, Biden didn't get rid of Christopher Wray. They are trying to let him go. They're trying to permit a coup. That is how corrupt things got in the U.S. When we're looking back on history and we want to know the low point, that's it right there. There was a coup, and we tried to forgive it, because it was orchestrated by rich people. Even in the 40s, when this was tried, we had enough sense not to, uh, not to just hand out forgiveness left and right. We didn't punish enough, but Jesus God, how far we've fallen. A wariness about appearing partisan. Institutional caution and clashes. Institutional caution is what they're calling that. And clashes over how much evidence was sufficient to investigate the actions of Trump and those around him all contributed to the slow pace. Let's pause it there for a second. They're worried about appearing partisan. Why is it they're never worried about offending decent people? Haven't you noticed that? They're always afraid of appearing partisan when it comes to offending somebody who will say that Biden is a socialist no matter what Biden does. When they, when they, might, when they might offend uh, somebody who casually uses the N-word when, uh, when they're in their own home. That person, uh, they're terrified of offending. They're not afraid to appear partisan uh, if, if, a, if a leftist hiccups uh, anywhere near the vicinity of a cop. Then they will swarm them, kick their ribs in, uh, mace them, pry open their eyes, mace them directly again just to make sure they got them, tase them, choke them, cuff them, choke them again, bash their head against the car a few times, and, uh, and throw them in jail, awaiting a trial a year later. No 
bond issued. That's that's actually quite partisan, I think. I think that's pretty partisan. Their 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 concerns with politics in general is uh, is a problem because when it says wariness about appearing partisan, that is letting politics dictate law. We cannot have that. Let me take that back. Politicians can dictate the law, great, but not law enforcement. The law, the law enforcement needs to be done separate from how people feel about who, who did the crime. I would think that would be obvious, but apparently uh, they're going to try to find ways to say, oh, but you can't. Oh, but a guy who wears a Confederate flag uh, hat when he when he drops off his grandkids to school and he smiles an evil smile at black kids that see it that guy we can't risk ever making him angry the very next director of the FBI needs to be a democrat we've never had one that needs to happen we we need actual law and order in November 2022, after Trump announced, ooh, let's see, yes, after Trump announced he was again running for president. So for the record, the case should have been uh, in court by that point. No reason it shouldn't have been. Uh, making him a potential 2024 rival to President Biden, Garland appointed special counsel Jack Smith to take over the investigation into Trump's attempt to overturn the 2020 election. In other words, into his coup. On June 8th, in a separate investigation that was also turned over to the special counsel, Smith secured a grand jury indictment against the former president for mishandling classified documents after leaving office. Remember, they let him hold on to those documents for like a year, for God's sake. Trump was charged with 31 counts of violating a part of the Espionage Act. We're going to talk about that later with Brian Tyler Cohen, as well as six counts arising from alleged efforts to mislead in other words, lie to federal investigators. In other words, obstructing justice yet again. The effort to investigate Trump over classified records has had its own obstacles, including FBI agents who resisted raiding the former president's home, but were not immediately fired when this was discovered. What the hell? But the discovery of top-secret documents in Trump's possession triggered an urgent national security investigation that laid out a well-defined legal path for prosecutors compared with the unprecedented task of building a case against Trump for trying to steal the election. Might be unprecedented, but it's not really confusing what needed to be done, is it? Whether a decision about Trump's culpability for January 6 could have come earlier is unclear. No, it isn't. It could have. The delays in examining that question began before Garland was even confirmed. Sherwin, senior Justice Department officials, and Paul, whatever, the top deputy to the FBI director, Christopher A. Ray, quashed a plan by prosecutors in the U.S. Attorney's Office to directly investigate Trump associates for any links to the riot, deeming it premature, according to five individuals familiar with the decision. Five. One, two, three, four, five individuals. That's a lot of sources. And you got to wonder why five people were so concerned they were willing to speak out. And you sure have to wonder why Christopher Wray was allowed to stay in that job. It's insane. It's just insane. You know why, though, because Biden didn't want to seem like he was being mean to Trump. The guy tried a coup. We want strength in our leaders. We also want them to be righteous, but there's no point in being righteous if you're too weak to do anything about it. Then you're just a, a, a mouthy person uh, of no consequence. Don't elect uh, weak folks president. We, we did what we had to do in 2020. We'll do what we have to do again in 2024. We'll try to make a man out of Biden. But Jesus Christ. Uh, the strategy was embraced by Garland. Okay, instead they insisted on a methodical approach, fo focusing first on the rioters and going up the ladder. You do that, for the record, when you don't know who the boss was. We know who the boss was. 
pretty insane. The strategy was embraced by Garland, Monaco, and Ray. That right there is a trifecta of corruption. We got to get rid of those three ASAP. They remained committed to it even as evidence emerged of an organized weeks-long effort by Trump and his advisors before January 6 to pressure state leaders, justice officials, and Vice President Mike Pence to block the certification of Biden's victory. In the weeks before January 6, Trump supporters boasted publicly, publicly they bragged about this, that they had submitted fake electors on his behalf. But the justice, that right there, go question Trump. But they're cowards. But the Justice Department declined to investigate the matter in February 2021. The Post found the department did not actively probe the effort for nearly a year. And then the FBI did not open an investigation of the elector scheme until April 2022, about 15 months after the attack. One more paragraph before I have an aneurysm, because this appears to be too good not to read. The Justice Department's painstaking approach to investigating Trump can be traced to Garland's desire to turn the page from missteps, bruising attacks and allegations of partisanship in the department's recent investigations of both Russia's interference in the 2016 presidential election and Hillary Clinton's use of a private email server. Why on earth is Garland so dumb that he cannot see the obvious there? One more. Maybe this will tell us. Inside justice, however, some lawyers have complained that the Attorney General's determination to steer clear of any claims of political motive has chilled efforts to investigate the former president. You couldn't use the T word, said one former justice official briefed on prosecutors' discussions. Oh, one more. This, it's too good. This account is based on internal documents, court files, congressional records, handwritten contemporaneous notes, and interviews with more than two dozen current and former prosecutors, investigators, and others with knowledge of the probe. Most of the people interviewed for this story spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss internal decision-making related to the investigation. I'll tell you. It was a rhetorical question. Garland is not dumb. I have a lot of uh, negative things to say about him, but he's not dumb. Unfortunately, uh, dumb would have been the only thing that meant he wasn't corrupt. So he's corrupt. Uh, why did he did he blame uh, the the bruising investigations into Russia and Hillary Clinton? Because he was looking for an excuse not to do his job. That's it. That's all there is. Further, uh, you know, if he was dumb, then he would have uh, he would have fallen for the idea that there was something wrong with the Rus Russia investigation. There was nothing wrong with it. It was obvious that uh, Trump was, was, was and did work with the Russians. The question was, did he do so more directly behind the scenes than he did on camera? I don't know, but he did on camera. He literally asked them to hack emails of a political rival, and they did. They responded. That right there... Done. On camera. Get him into a court. Make him say, I was joking. It was a joke. Okay, you let a judge decide that. And if they're Trump appointed, they're corrupt, and they'll say, yeah, it was clearly, he was just joking. It's just a coincidence that it, it happened immediately after that. He's not dumb. He's corrupt. And he wanted an uh, excuse not to go after somebody powerful, somebody rich. Not to go after his class, the aristocracy. The people who think they are our betters. If you want to let them know they are not, vote in primaries. They are coming up. Go as left as you can. 
in the general, yeah, you're if you want to keep a democracy, you're going to have to vote blue no matter who. That's just how it's got to be. The primaries are our chance to get uh, blue politicians with strength so that the, the principles the Democratic Party says it's all about are not just words, but they actually turn into actions. Every stage of this, from now till 2024, November, every stage of it uh, gets easier based on how much work we did in the days before. We get a strong showing in the primaries of genuine leftists. The general's going to be a lot easier because we're going to have people who actually make firm cases against uh, right-wing insanity. We're going to get people who can't be tagged as being uh, corrupted by the same forces that the right wing are. Taking bribes from the NRA, taking bribes from big oil and their coal companies, uh, and, their, and their whatever else investments they have. And if we're successful in the primaries and we're successful in the general, it's going to be real easy real, real easy to get the legislation we want done. We were real close in 2020. This country was improved significantly with the milk toast watered down, uh, compromising with the devil uh, work that was done by Biden and a bunch of centrists with, with a small progressive voice chiming in. If we have a big progressive voice, uh, it's going to be a hell of a lot better. Links in the description uh, for when primaries are. Participate in them. Get your friends to go too. Let's see what the Wicked community has to say. <laughs>